Hey, music junkies. Professor of Rock always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. If you're crazy about music, you're going to want to subscribe to this channel below so you don't miss out. We're now coming at you daily. Rock and roll as we know it would not exist without Richard Wayne Pennyman, known the world over as Little Richard. He was a trailblazer that boldly set the standard for rock vitality. He was the pioneer of soul and funk and arguably the first rhythm and blues crossover artist. Little Richard broke the racial color lines, performing music that brazenly integrated the white audience with the black audience. His flamboyant live performances absolutely blew people away. And it inspired many of the mammoth superstars in music that would follow. I'm talking about Elvis Presley, the Everly Brothers, David Bowie, James Brown, the Rolling Stones, Elton John, Prince, Rod Stewart, Jerry Lee Lewis, Buddy Holly, even the Beatles. They cited Little Richard as one of their biggest influences. In fact, Little Richard is credited for tutoring a young Paul McCartney on how to vocalize to project a more dynamic delivery. Little Richard himself was inspired to become a musical artist in 1951 when he heard Ike Turner's piano intro on the song Rocket 88, a trend-setting R&B rocker by Jackie Brinson and his Delta Cats that was really a precursor to the rockabilly sound of the 1950s. The Delta Cats were actually Ike Turner and his Kings of Rhythm. Little Richard was called the originator, the innovator, mostly for his mind-blowing performances. It's been said that seeing Little Richard in concert was an unparalleled, life-altering experience. During a Little Richard show, you would witness him doing the seemingly impossible with such antics as putting one leg on top of his piano while standing and deftly pounding the keys in perfect melody. He'd also stand backwards and play the piano behind his back with perfect proficiency. One of his most famous acts was when he would jump on top of the piano and do a 360-degree spin while maintaining the rhythm of the song that he was performing. It was a spellbinding feat. Little Richard would scream at the crowd. He'd dare them to get on their feet and join in on the frenzy with unrelenting energy. That's what rock and roll is all about. Among his many awards and accolades over a 70-year career, First of all, Little Richard was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1986. He was part of the first class. He was inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame. He was a recipient of the Lifetime Achievement Award from the Recording Academy, as well as the Lifetime Achievement Award from the Rhythm and Blues Foundation. He was also inducted into the NAACP Image Award Hall of Fame. Bottom line, Little Richard was part of the Holy Trifecta that engineered the blueprint for rock and roll. I mean, it was Elvis Presley, Chuck Berry, and Little Richard. They were the Holy Trinity. Now, one could argue that Jerry Lee Lewis, Buddy Holly, Fats Domino, Lloyd Price, Johnny Cash, Bill Haley, Ray Charles, and a few others certainly in the conversation, but it was really those three that truly took rock and roll to the forefront. They were the ones that made the dream a possibility for all. I would argue that of that holy trinity, Little Richard did it with the most electrifying, no-holds-barred, rip-roaring intensity. He was rhythm and blues personified with that rock edge that made him untouchable as a performer. Everybody who came after owes a huge debt of gratitude to Little Richard. Before Prince, Michael Jackson, Marvin Gaye, Sly Stone, name anybody. They all followed the trail that he blazed. Little Richard didn't just kick open the door for all of them to walk through. He built the house, the foundation that the door led into with his bare hands. Having said that, here is my Little Richard Fiver. Top five Little Richard recorded performances. Number five, from 1957, Keep a Knockin'. The roots of this song go back to James Wiggins' version in 1928, but may have gone back even further with versions that altered the lyrics and the tempo. Little Richard turned Keep a Knockin' into a rousing rocker with his knockout frenetic style. It was a number two R&B smash that also crossed over to the pop charts, hitting number eight in the US and number 21 in the UK. I mean, with this song in barely over two minutes, Little Richard burns the place down. It's such a flamethrower. Number four, Lucille. 
a song that was originally credited to Albert Collins. No relation to the blues guitarist of the same name as the sole writer. But Little Richard bought half the song's rights while Collins was doing time in the Louisiana State Prison, and Lucille became a 50-50 co-write. Little Richard's gospel tinge shrieking on Lucille was life-affirming, especially to people whose parents raised them on the records of Bing Crosby and Andrews sisters. I mean, think about that. Nobody had ever heard anything quite like it before or since. Number three, the irresistible bar blues ditty, Long Tall Sally. One of the most influential songs ever recorded and covered by many of Little Richard's worshipers as a testament to his impact in the artist community. The most notable cover is probably the version by the Beatles with McCartney applying the personal training that Little Richard imparted on Sir Paul. McCartney's lead vocal on the Beatles remake is a valiant impersonation of his idol. Long Tall Sally topped the R&B chart in the U.S. and ascended all the way to number three in the U.K. in 1956. Number two, Good Golly Miss Molly, a jump blues classic co-written by John Mariscalco and Bumps Blackwell. Little Richard first recorded the song in 1956, but didn't release it as a single until 1958, although a group called The Valiants recorded a version of Good Golly Miss Molly before Little Richard released his song as a single in 58. It was Little Richard who would score the big hit with the tune rising to number four on the pop chart. Little Richard recalled that the first time he heard the phrase, good golly, Miss Molly, was when he heard a disc jockey named Jimmy Panic shouted out on his radio show. Man, Little Richard's zestful style made good golly, Miss Molly a rock and roll standard. And number one, Tootie Fruity, written by Little Richard and Dorothy Labastri. Legend has it that Little Richard wrote Tootie Fruity and began belting it out at his boss and co-workers while he was a dishwasher at a Greyhound bus station in Macon, Georgia. On Tootie Fruity, Little Richard delivered one of the most indelible song intros of the rock era. The catchphrase was the way Little Richard would respond to people when they asked him what he was up to. And really with that, he created the action phrase that defines rock and roll. The original lyrics for Tutti Frutti were very sexual, as most of Little Richard's songs were fashion. When he performed the song at clubs, though, the crowd went nuts. Now, because of the rabid live audience response, Little Richard knew Tutti Frutti was a hit, but he also was astute enough to know that he needed to tone down the lyrics. So he and his producer, Bumps Blackwell, enlisted the help of New Orleans lyricist Dorothy Labastri to homogenize the lyrics. Dorothy changed the original lyric from Tutti Fruity Good Booty to Tutti Fruity Ah Rudy, which was a slang expression meaning all right. Tutti Fruity was included in the National Recording Registry of the Library of Congress in 2010. I mean, it's really the kind of life-changing song that is the whole reason that the National Recording Registry exists in the first place, you know? Uh, Little Richard, we celebrate your indelible impact as the architect of a rock and roll. As Little Richard leaves this world for the next one, rock and roll heaven is now complete. Leave us a comment on Little Richard and his impact on music. Tell us your favorite songs. Also, click the links below to get Little Richard's classic songs on vinyl and to listen to all these songs in our curated playlist. Also, subscribe to our channel if you love music. Help us keep the music alive. Till next time, three chords and the truth, my friends.